All right, I think it's finally time to talk about my wildly lavish $700 dinner at Le Cirque at the Bellagio. This dinner was life-changing. Um, it was otherworldly. It's one of the best dinners I've ever had in my entire life anywhere. Uh, Paris, Tokyo, anywhere domestically. Michelin star, non-Michelin star. This dinner was almost indescribable, but I'm going to do my best to describe it to you. Uh, Le Cirque is a triple A five diamond, uh, Forbes five diamond restaurant. And I think it's one of the best in Las Vegas, if not the best. If you told me it was the best in Las Vegas, I would not disagree with you. I'm just going to jump right into it. You walk up to the place and it's very unassuming. Um, it's actually very underwhelming. It's just a slight little hallway that leads into two double doors. And then you open up those double doors and it leads you into another hallway. And that hallway leads you into the lobby of the restaurant. And then you immediately realize where you are. Uh, it is opulent. It is distinct. Uh, it is refined. It is elegant. It is exquisite. Um, it's one of the most beautiful lobbies I've ever seen ever. I'm talking like a hotel, restaurant, wherever. Um, you immediately know where you are. You are in an ultra elite high-end dining uh, venue and you also know that a special meal is going to come and you also know it's going to be really, really expensive. Here's what the lobby looks like. You can see the really cool multicolored uh, sofas and then you can also see uh, the theme of the restaurant in the background on the walls. Um, it is a circus type of theme, but the Cirque will tell you that they designed their restaurant to mimic what it would be like to eat inside a jewel box. So if you ever wondered what it would be like to live inside a jewel box or eat inside a jewel box, this is how they theme their restaurant. It does have a circus theme. I'll show you that in just a second. I will say that my favorite part uh, of the lobby was the gigantic and stunning stained glass dome chandelier. It was striking. Here's what the main dining area looks like. The lobby bar leads directly into it and it is vivid. It is vibrant. It is bold. It is technicolored. It mimics the decor of probably the classiest circus on earth. I just love the vibrant, drooping, multicolored drapes. And of course you have some really classy circus type decor on the walls. If you want to eat in this main dining room, you have amazing views of the Bellagio Fountain. And one thing I really liked about Le Cirque is that it's different. Typically at places like this, the atmosphere is really stuffy. It's really bland. Typically like the higher end the restaurant, the more bland the decor is, at least from my experience. Le Cirque decided to do something differently. They used a cornucopia of colors and it is one of the most unique and distinct dining settings I've ever been to. So that's the main dining area, but I decided to eat at the lobby bar area. It was just me and plus I like to eat at the bar. Uh, the bar area was so exquisite. Um, it was comprised of a lot of expensive and exotic woods. The bar itself was comprised of some of the best and most expensive liquors on the planet. Just take a look at that top shelf. That top shelf combined in totality is easily worth more than a car. All right, let's get things started. This is drink number one. This is called Le Jeune Doble. My French is terrible. I don't speak French, so my pronunciation could be off, but I believe it's pronounced Le Jeune Doble. Uh, it's the most expensive drink on the menu. Uh, it is a vodka drink, an egg white drink, and the thing that makes it really cool is it comes with 10 grams of caviar suspended on top. It is suspended within an ice bowl. This drink is one of the coolest I've ever had. It combines some of my favorite things. It combines vodka, an egg white, caviar, and then the glassware is really cool. You're actually supposed to drink it out of that little spout. So I ordered the eight dish tasting menu. The first dish that you're seeing is not part of the eight dish tasting menu. This is just the chef's compliments. Uh, it is a truffled custard. Uh, the truffled was actually very neutral. The dish came out warm and then the custard soup really provided the flavor. This is probably the first and last time I'll ever have truffled custard. It really wasn't designed to taste good, although it wasn't bad. It's really designed to set the palate for what's to come. Dish number one, caviar. What would you expect at a restaurant like this? There was lots of caviar and truffles in this meal, by the way. Uh, the most interesting thing was what was beneath the caviar. I think it's called bavarois. Bavarois is basically like a set cream. It's comprised of custard, whipped cream, and gelatin. Um, it was basically just like eating butter. I ate the caviar and I ate the butter. I did not eat that veal tendon crisp. I'm trying to limit the carbs. Dish number two was the main lobster salad. The thing that really stood out to me was first of all, the dish. I just love the customized plates and I believe that's a lemur on the dish. I don't believe it's a monkey, I believe it's a lemur. And then of course the main lobster salad was not only delicious, it was beautiful. Those are edible flowers. Okay, dish number three was the Hudson Valley foie gras, one of the most exquisite and decadent French dishes of all time. Uh, the foie gras came out seared and also came with pickled blackberries, not just blackberries, but pickled blackberries. And those actually are not beans below, those are actually pine nuts. So dish number four is a dish I've never had before. I believe it's pronounced aglanati, and basically it's a miniature ravioli. But what made it interesting is what it was stuffed with. It was stuffed with 
roasted sunchokes. The only way I could describe roasted sunchokes would be a more exotic, better texturized, and better flavored edamame. This was one of the best dishes of the night, and that liquid you see around it is like a chicken broth. So we're halfway through our meal and it's time to refuel, AKA order another drink. I ordered the second most expensive drink on the menu, the Dorjon. This is a gin drink, but what made this drink so cool and interesting is that they clipped a truffle to the side of the glass. As you know, a large portion of taste comes from smell and the hints of truffle combined with the gin made a really interesting drink experience. So we're halfway through our meal and you haven't seen anything yet. The best is absolutely yet to come. Speaking of the best, it comes in at number five. Dish number five was the Brittany sea bass. This was the best dish of the night. I don't even like sea bass. I particularly don't like white fish. I usually find it to be bland and flaky. The Brittany sea bass was absolutely the best dish of the night. And when you see the next two dishes, you'll see how big a statement that is. All right, dish number six is the Colorado lamb saddle. It came out with English peas and a yogurt emulsion. The restaurant claimed that this is their best dish on the entire tasting menu. The dish was fantastic, but of the three entrees, it was my least favorite. So when I was looking over the menu, I thought this next dish, dish number seven, was gonna be my favorite. So in order to prepare for that, I ordered a French Pinot Noir. I only drink Pinot Noirs, and I only drink French Pinot Noirs. This thing, I think it was a 2017, was smooth, pretty bold for a French Pinot with a silky texture. All right, dish number seven is the Japanese Wagyu loin. Uh, this is an F1 Japanese Wagyu. It's not an A5. You can upgrade to the A5 for an extra $128. I just wanted the standard experience, so I just went with the F1. Now, here's what made this dish phenomenal. An F1 is a cross between a domestic Angus and a Japanese Wagyu. Typically, those are raised in America nine out of 10 times. This is an Angus Wagyu cross raised in Japan and then sent over here. That's why you see the crazy marbling and unbelievable fat content. Domestic Wagyu will never look like this and domestic Wagyu will never taste like this. This thing was outstanding. So that's it for the entrees. It's time to graduate to dessert. And this is one of the most show-stopping, stunting desserts of all time. It's the chocolate ball. You've seen this at other high-end restaurants. This dessert never gets old. Uh, basically, this is a chocolate shell with vanilla ice cream in the middle and hazelnuts. And then you pour the warm chocolate syrup on it and it melts. Like I said, aesthetically, this never gets old. I could watch this come out again and again. And it was so good. I could definitely eat that again and again. What an extravagant, indulgent, and extraordinary meal. Uh, we're not done yet, though. I have one drink left. This was actually my most expensive drink. It was an off-menu item. Uh, they said they were going to make me a drink with a toasted marshmallow. I said, absolutely. They said, it's an espresso martini. I said, only if you can make a decaf. Of course, they made it happen. So I love this glassware. The drink came out in one of the most beautiful martini glasses I've ever seen. The hyper-elongated stem was a showstopper. Of course, she torched up the marshmallow and plopped it in my drink. It was the perfect punctuation point and nightcap to an extraordinary meal. The eight course tasting menu at Le Cirque at the Bellagio is $388. The only cost that I really didn't detail was a large Evian water. Uh, that was $9.50. Subtotal for the food and drink was $565. Uh, tax was another 47 and I threw on 20%, putting my grand total at $725. So that's it. That's what $700 gets you at the Cirque at the Bellagio. I honestly thought it was well worth it. When I had my dinner at Mizumi, I wasn't quite sure. At Mizumi, it was so much different because really all I did was order some expensive cuts of Wagyu and Toro. This was a much more complete meal. I got an eight-course tasting menu. The menu was brilliantly creative. The service was impeccable. The decor is spectacular and unrivaled. And overall, the experience came together much more than my meal at Mizumi. My dinner at Le Cirque was definitely an improvement from last time. I thought the menu was much improved. And also, the atmosphere was a bit more approachable. Well, as approachable as a dinner like this could be. If you're looking for one of the most supreme, unforgettable, life-changing meals in Las Vegas, definitely head to Le Cirque. It's gonna cost you a little bit, but I promise you what you pay is worth it. It is an unforgettable dining experience that will last a lifetime.